Hi everyone, I got this uh, pretty cool uh, Ouster OS1 64 Layer 3 LiDAR, um, and in my previous video I showed how to set up the networking and do some basic uh, uh, visualization in RViz. So in this video I kind of want to focus more on the raw side of things uh, and show you some more data and, and kind of go over some of the, the interesting things we can analyze uh, through, through RViz. So uh, let's get started. Um, so we're going to start off with just a, uh, an empty workspace, there's uh, nothing in here, uh, and let's clone uh, our, our ROS drivers. Um, I'll add the, uh, the link to these in the, in the show notes, uh, and we're going to build our, our workspace. Um, so inside of uh, the, the Ouster ROS1 drivers, you're going to find um, the Ouster client, which is the non-ROS uh, kind of libraries, Ouster ROS, which is the ROS libraries exposing the point cloud, exposing uh, the visualizer, uh, if you want to use their, their built-in visualizer rather than Arviz, and uh, the OS1 uh, point cloud node, uh, which is going to give you back out that, that point cloud, the intensity uh, image. All right, there we go. So let's source our develop space. And ROS launch, uh, ouster ROS. And you see here, the, uh, the only option is the, this OS1 that launch file. So if we kind of analyze this here real quick, uh, you're gonna see there's, there's three nodes launched. There's this image node, which is gonna be publishing out the, the, uh, the range intensity and noise images coming out of the, the, the sensor, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the OS1 point cloud uh, node, which is going to give out the, the point clouds, and the OS1 node, which is going to be taking the packets from, from the UDP socket that the uh, sensor is connected to. Uh, so so we, we launch this, uh, we connect it to the sensor. Uh, my IP happens to be 10.5.5.87, but if you're trying to set up the, the networking stack, uh, you should definitely check out my, my other video uh, discussing that. Uh, we're going to be sending data back to our computer, which is the 10.5.5.1 in the LiDAR mode, uh, which is going to be, I think, 10 hertz uh, at full full resolution. Um, we're, we're setting, uh, waiting for the data. Uh, we got some metadata, so this, this JSON file is going to contain information about the, the settings that are currently in, in the laser we can, we can use. And then we got our serial number and firmware version inside the LiDAR. Okay, uh, so let's just let's open up Arviz here. Uh, we can see I already, already uh, had a configuration file for this. Uh, and you can just, you know, first off note that, you know, this is a 64 layer uh, LiDAR. So inside of a, a small room uh, like this, you know, you can get very dense points. You know, it's basically, you know, yeah, this is extremely dense. Uh, you, you aren't, aren't going to find this out of uh, many, many LiDARs, especially LiDARs you use for the indoor robotic space. So I uh, just kind of want to, to look over this real quick. You know, there's, there's a couple of interesting features you can see right, right, right off the bat. Um, if we kind of look in this certain view here, you can notice that all the points are kind of lining up in the same position uh, over many different uh, sensor readings. Uh, that's actually because the Ouster LiDAR works different from a Velodyne uh, and actually takes measurements at encoder ticks inside of the LiDAR. So that means that for every measurement, uh, you're, it's you know, going to be taking um, samples from the exact same position uh, every single iteration. Uh, which is really nice. That means that there's a lot of structure behind the point clouds, and from a point from one uh, uh, sample to another, you can expect them to be in the same position. Uh, so you know things like raycasting can be cached if you're not moving. Uh, there's a lot of really nice uh, things you can do with that. So uh, something else we notice here right away is that I have this this uh, picture frame here, um, and you can see that it, it or you can't see, but it's black. Uh, so you're gonna see that the the uh, the intensity is very different. So you kind of make out the fact that there's something even just hanging in the wall without without really uh, having any other uh, texture information. Uh, if we kind of scan around here, um, you can kind of see the uh, the top of my bed with some some pillows on a backboard, which is uh, pretty interesting. You can you can make that out so well. Um, and over here, this is something that I found really interesting, is that this is actually my, my motorcycle jacket. So this is, this is black leather. Um, so it's not, not a big surprise to me that, that you have these um, uh, kind of red, low, low confidence uh, uh, dots uh, for, for the point cloud. But something that's really interesting is that, is that you can pretty distinctively make out the logo of my jacket, which is made of a, a um, reflective tape. So in the middle here, this is a Dainese uh, branded jacket. So you can kind of see the little fox head there, which is, which is really neat and kind of proving to me that, hey, yeah, <laughs> having some uh, reflective tape on my motorcycle jacket is probably, probably good for safety since these uh, sensors are mostly used for autonomous driving. So kind of over here, you know, you see, see a closet. Uh, something that's kind of cool over here, too, is here's, here's another painting. You can see some of the, some of the darker colors uh, have different intensity, intensity uh, values. Uh, then over here, um, this is something I found really interesting, is that this is actually a uh, life jacket. So this is why I go sailing in. And you can really distinctively make out the, the, every kind of detail of the life life jacket. You can see some some hanging uh, um, 
straps uh, for it as well. Um, and on the door behind it, you, you can you can make out um, these these uh, little rectangular uh, shapes you see on a lot of a lot of indoor uh, doors, <laughs> I guess. Um, not sure what they're called, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of neat. You can kind of see those uh, so so uh, uh, sharply. So kind of going going more around the room. Um, you know, this is a little thing I have at my desk, but nothing you know, nothing you probably know. Um, and we kind of like zoom out here, and we see some of these uh, values out here that I thought for a while might be actually my, my neighbor's building across the street since uh, my, my curtains are open, so you can kind of see it through here. But I, I'm kind of thinking now those are actually just reflections uh, from, from the, the, the time of flight uh, camera. Uh, I don't think that my building is actually that, that close to, to my window, uh, but I guess I, I could be wrong. But uh, given that I see over here, we had this almost mirror reflection uh, on this side, and uh, I can distinctively tell you that, that this is not not here. Uh, this is uh, this is the corner on a, on a big intersection. So this is definitely some some reflection values. But it's good to, it's good to see that the intensities are fairly low. These are all kind of reddish points. So if you were to be dropping some sort of minimum and minimum confidence values, uh, these these points will probably go away real quick. So you're really only left with the uh, the good values. Because uh, I'm in San Francisco, um, there's a, San Francisco architecture loves these these bay windows. So you can kind of see the the bay windows, and you can see actually where where they 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 end. So here's the kind of the top top of the, uh, the, the, the wall, uh, which is kind of interesting. And then, and then if you look from below, you can kind of see the ceiling with a couple of these, uh, these beams. Uh, and like I was saying, it's a 64 uh, layer LIDAR. So this is a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of these, of these uh, uh, 64 layers are actually just the ceiling that you're not even seeing from, from the walls and all the other stuff. So I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm very impressed by, you know, how much information you can, you can really dive into here. Um, so, one of the things I want to kind of uh, hit home was that measurements are taken by the encoder values. Um, that if we actually go into our viz here in our point cloud and we change the alpha or the the time decay from zero, so we're just taking the current measurement to about one second, and we buffer that information, you can see that really you know within some some you know obviously speculating noise that all of these points are in the exact same position uh, every single time. Um, I mean that that's just really interesting. Uh, you know, Velodyne, you do this, you get you get more context from the scene because you have this phase shift thing going on, uh, which is nice if you're staying uh, stationary. But you know, I guess the Thomas cars and robots ideally aren't staying stationary all that much. Um, so uh, yeah, this is just really really interesting and kind of showing that hey, this this really works. Um, and one really nice thing about that is actually um, so Ouster instead of just giving you just these these point clouds out. They actually give you these range images and these intensity images and the uh, the noise image. So as you can see, you know these images are, are 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 stable. They don't kind of have this phase shift or shaking or something. So that's showing that these that each of the measurements are taken at the same encoder value at, at a, every iteration, um, and that means that you can actually run these over just normal computer vision algorithms. You know, think about a a, a CNN where you have RGB of a you know n n by n uh, matrix of of values. You know, these are three um, channels of some n by m. Uh, uh, information and you know really wouldn't surprise me if you could just feed these directly into some some uh, neural net models and get some some detections without actually having to go into the three D space. So you can do detection of cars just through these range images. And once you have you know once you know where the car is, or you know for this case once you know where the the lampshade is, then you can project that into three D space and see the, the position of the obstacle is. So yeah, uh, as you can see here, you have this intensity image. So you can see that the the lighter colors, like my walls, which are which are white, uh, are 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 closer to one. And the the values that are that are black, so the the picture frame, the the leather jacket, uh, this this other this other uh, painting over here are also uh, pretty close to black. And then back here, what you're saying is that I had this kind of mounted in the the corner of, of, of the space. So like you know, it's it's back here. So what you're seeing uh, is actually just occlusion from the the Minzi, uh, which I think is about 20 centimeters uh, back here, uh, which you kind of see over here. Well, in the in the range image. Uh, the noise image is kind of interesting. You can kind of see it's a little, a little darker in this area, but it's not something like super distinguishable. So I kind of wonder uh, what this, how this information from this noise image is actually actually captured. Um, yeah. Um, so this is the that's the Ross driver. Here's some information in Arviz. I thought some so going over some of these these interesting notes I found uh, in Arviz would be helpful. Um, if you find that helpful, uh, please uh, comment, uh, like, and subscribe. And uh, let me know if, uh, how you feel about these videos, and maybe uh, I, can, I can make some more, do some, some other sensors. Um, just let me know.